Okay, so I'm here with uh, Professor Fielding. Uh, firstly, Professor, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule welcome. today welcome. to speak to us. Can I just ask you briefly uh, what it is that you do? Sure, sure. Well, I, I'm, I direct the Nutrition, Exercise, Physiology, and Sarcopenia Laboratory, which is part of the Jean Mayer USDA Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging, which is, which is at Tufts University. And okay. we study um, the factors that influence the age-related changes in muscle mass and muscle strength, and we try to examine interventions that potentially could slow or reverse this process. Okay. I can ask you, how did you first hear about sarcopenia? Well, it's interesting. I was a graduate student in the 1990s and late 80s with uh, Bill Evans and uh, Irv Rosenberg, and it was around that time that they started thinking about this thing called age-related loss in muscle mass needing a name. So, so I can kind of remember, in fact, when um, they started calling this thing we had known about for a long time sarcopenia and, and the importance around this, this idea of if you ascribe a clinical name to something, it, it sort of increases awareness or at least increases the, in, the interest in sort of uh, uh, investigation into this subject. And I, I think one of the things that's happened is that has happened. Okay. Uh, we spoke last night, we were talking, you mentioned about with elderly people that they don't associate weakened legs with sure, a solution. I th- yeah, sure. I think that, you know, like older people or any, any people actually think about, like, if they ha- have pain in their joints, they know that they have arthritis and that's causing them some difficulty. Or if they have, have chest pain, they know that there may be some problem with their heart. I think, I think there's very little awareness among, among older folks or, or, or people in general that that if they have difficulty walking or they have difficulty getting up out of a chair or climbing stairs in their house, that, that the problem is related to some changes and some, some dysfunction, if you will, in, in their muscles. And I think, I think we could do a lot to educate people about the idea that, that muscle weakness is not inevitable and that it, it, there are a lot of things we know about now that can actually prevent or restore uh, the loss in muscle mass and, and muscle function. Okay, and I think it's a good point to make, is it, that uh, it's never too late to start lifting weights? Yeah, yeah we, we, we think that you know exercise, whether it's resistance exercise or aerobic exercises, can be safely and successfully accomplished by a wide range of older people, even people in their 90s. So, so you're right, I think it is never too late to start thinking about getting people engaged in exercise and more physical activity. Yeah. So the likes of weight training, it's not just for bodybuilders. That's, for... that's right, absolutely. And, and you know, um, that doesn't mean that everybody does the same amount of exercise and, and it has to be tailored a little bit to individuals. Everybody that we've seen can benefit from, from the effects of exercise. Okay, now if any healthcare professionals or physicians are watching this interview, what recommendations would you give that well, they, they well, can pass on? Sure, well, we think it's important to really have clinicians and physicians think about assessing their patients for their function. So even if you can measure things as simple as how fast they walk across a four meter course, their gait speed, or or even get a measure of their grip strength, we think that's really important information. And if you find that those those measures are low, then then we would recommend that you consider that one of the causes of that is, is low muscle mass. Yep. Okay. So what would be a recommendation to a member of the public? Well, I think that if you feel like you're not able to do things that you always were able to do successfully, like walking or playing with your grandchildren, it's it's time to sort of ask your physician about what what you can be doing to sort of counteract that or to to improve those functions. And and, and hopefully he gives you a a reasonable recommendation about, about aerobic and resistance training exercise to counteract some of these changes. Great, okay. And how important is the consumption of protein? Um, you know, it's, it's somewhat controversial, but certainly we know that there are, um, there are segments of the older population that consume well below the, the recommended allowance for protein. And, and in particular, those people, we believe, really need to think about increasing their protein intake because those are the, that is the building blocks for muscle. So if you're, if you're trying to build muscle or prevent the loss of muscle and you're, you're not consuming at least an adequate amount of protein, it's, it's really hard to do that. So I, I think yeah. that's really a, a good recommendation for most people. Right. And finally, if I may, uh, you know that I'm quite passionate about setting up sarcopenia day is, uh, to raise awareness. Sure, but... sure. I mean, I think, I think all these things, I think things like sarcopenia day and, 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 and getting sort of public messages out about muscle weakness and muscle loss being important for older people, I think anything we can do to do that and, and increase people's interest and awareness of this 
important syndrome, I think it will be really great. So, so you're to be commended for that. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. thanks. Okay, Professor. Great. Cheers, thank mate. you very much. Cheers. Cheers.